The Florida Gators beat the UCF Knights on Saturday night. Can they keep momentum rolling and hit a three-game win streak against Tennessee this week? You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast and Network, your team every day. Thanks for being Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Tuesday. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Today's episode of Locked On Gators brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you can get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, just visit FanDuel.com to get started. And the Florida Gators, yes, won against UCF on Saturday night. Yes, the Tennessee Volunteers lost against Arkansas on Saturday night. But I don't want people to assume that, yeah, that means it's just going to keep rolling, right? Uh, And I also don't want to sit here and go, oh, they definitely can't do it. Because I think that that's... Honestly, I think that's, a, that's an asinine statement to make. I'm not confident in this coaching staff, but I do think that they've done. How do I put this? Uh, I'm not confident in saying this coaching staff will win games that they should win definitively. I will say, though, that I, I think they've shown up in moments where we maybe haven't expected them to show up, or I think that they've shown that, hey, even if you do doubt us, we might still be able to win these games. And I think Tennessee is a team that there's a a pretty clear path to victory here. Uh, First off, it starts with the defense, right? I mean, every every time that you play the Tennessee Volunteers and Josh Heupel and this offense, you're going to key in on your defense needs to come ready to play. Because while this is a Tennessee offense that has struggled to put up points, they've not been as explosive as they could be since Hendon Hooker, really, two years ago. But with Nico, you like they still have that explosive ability, and he's he's got enough mobility to be a threat there. One thing the defense needs to do is you need to impact Nico. Um and I know that that there's that clip going around of I think it was Landon Jackson from Arkansas. They just rushed three. And they got pressure on Nico there. Uh, Left tackle had a horrible rep there. Nico has been awful under pressure this year. And I mean awful. He's got a passer rating of 26.4 per PFF. He's got a passer rating of 26.4 when under pressure. If you don't know how bad that is, Please allow me to tell you how bad that is. Nico has a pass rating of 26.4 under pressure. That means that he would be better off just spiking the ball. You get a 39.6 pass rating if you throw one to 100 passes and they're just all straight up incompletions. If you just spike the ball 100 times, you'd have a higher pass rating than Nico when he's under pressure. Because he's been awful this year. Yeah, he's just been downright bad under pressure. And again, we've seen reps against Arkansas, which I will also say this. Just to play devil's advocate, there were some times where it was Arkansas or Tennessee needed to throw the ball and it was very clear and teams can kind of pin their ears back and get after them. Absolutely. I'm not going to act as if that hasn't happened. But the fact remains, he's been terrible when under pressure. Like, like, I think that most Florida Gators fans look at Graham Mertz and we go, oh, he's really not good under pressure. And I think when you look at Graham, you can kind of tell why he's not good when he's under pressure. Or at least I can, and I think that a lot of people can. Graham's not good under pressure because he doesn't have just natural arm talent to make throws when off platform. Nico does, and Nico's worse than Graham when under pressure. Like that's that's what we're talking about there. Uh, so so Nico's been just terrible under pressure. You need to figure out how to generate that pressure. And here's the thing: I don't think that blitzing is the best path to take. Okay, because um, I think that when you look at 
what Tennessee does offensively. They really spread you out. They they abuse the width that you can operate from in college. You know, you can you can really stretch the margins, really. Um And so what we saw Florida do last year and what I'm hoping and expecting the plan to be this week is when they motion their running back out wide, edge rusher goes with them. Like we're going to go heavy against that so that if you throw it there, where like you've got to block a a D end with a receiver and good luck there. And we've got numbers now, right? Like we've got three defenders there. You've got two blockers and a receiver. We've got numbers. We're fine with that. Okay. I don't think blitzing is the move because it's tough to blitz from that spot, right? You've got guys spread out wide. They're not going to be rushing, right? You you can send linebackers and still rush and everything, but I don't think sending five or more is the way to go. I think that you have to either win just outright as pass rushers, which again, I know that everybody's seen the clip uh, on Twitter or a lot of people have seen the clip on Twitter. Uh, again, I think it was Landon Jackson just winning one-on-one against the left tackle when they rush three. That could happen. You could be put in those situations. But you need to just win as pass rushers outright. I will say Florida's interior pass rushers outside of the UCF game haven't been good this year. But also you have to create coverage pressures. You've got to have whoever is is running vertical you've got to be covering that i don't know what the, what the call is so i can't just say oh you gotta have jason marshall there who by the way has been playing great this year but you got to create coverage pressures there or just have your guys win outright as pass rushers i think that's vitally important to generating these these pressures i also think it's important to say you need to take away those screen passes you look at this tennessee up of Nico's pass attempts are screens. 20% are screens, okay? He's got, I I think it's like almost 60% of his passes are shorter than 10 yards, but 20% of his passes are screens, okay? He's 27 for 28 on screens this year um, without a drop, but yeah. um, So I, I think that when you look at that, you go, okay, well, He's 27 for 28. They average seven yards per attempt on those screens. And they're being thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Like they're creating yards after catch opportunities. That's the big thing with last year. Again, you go back and you watch how Florida defended Tennessee and moving Princely or whoever was on the field at that time with the running back across because they like to throw those screens, then destroying the screen. It, you take away that screen and you take away a lot of the offense. They like to spread you out, run the ball, absolutely. But the screen game, another part of how they do their damage, okay? And I I don't like hearing that because their offense looks the way that it looks that they don't run the ball. They run the ball a lot. That's part of the reason for that offense. That's part of the the thought process behind the Bryle spread. Like, they want to spread you out so that you've got Again, because they, they abuse the hashes. They stack receivers out there. They'll come out there, QB, running back next to him, 5-0 line, and then no one until the sidelines. And they've got all that space, and you've got to defend all that space. And when you have guys spread out there, they'll pick you apart. They will. I, I know that Florida's done a good job of slowing down this offense last year. Um, they didn't when Hendon Hooker was there. And I think that his experience was a big part of that. But... I think that you you have to win there. Like they want to spread you out and they want to run the football. If if you let them, they'll run the football easily. Like they, they have no problem doing that. I don't like the the narrative that tries to get pushed about, oh, well, they don't like to run the football. They love running the football. Okay. You look at at the Baylor days when where this offense originated, and you look at uh, Lake Seastrunk. And he's just rushing lane after rushing. Lane. They were just spamming inside zone with everybody spread out because that's what you can do at that point. And that's what they were built on doing. And that's what they continued to do. So offensively, take away the screens. You've got to get pressure on Nico. Like that has to be absolutely premium when we're talking about this plan here. Florida Gators offense has to do their part as well. We'll talk about that next on Lockdown Gators. 
All right, Locked On Gators fans, it's time for the Roy Player of the Week. The Roy app lets you directly support your favorite athletes, unlike collectives where you make a donation to a general fund, which I will say for Florida Victorious, you can make the donation to a general fund and pick a specific sport. With Roy, you can choose a specific athlete you want to support. So you back the players specifically that you want to, and in return, you get exclusive content after the season, like personal videos and updates. And the best part, it's risk-free. If the athlete transfers or doesn't create the content, you get your money back. This week, the Locked On Gators Player of the Week, Bryce Thornton, because he deserves it. Bryce Thornton played the best game of his career on Saturday night against UCF. So we just contributed $100 to his campaign on Roy. And if you want to join in, if, even if it's $10, $5, $1, doesn't matter. You can do that, right? right? It's about the message that you send to someone like Bryce Thorne uh, of supporting them and sticking behind them, right? So our collective supports him, and now you can support him with Roy. Plus, Roy is doing their part to bring fans just closer to the school and athletes with an exciting giveaway. Roy is giving one lucky fan two tickets to any game of their choice in November. Download the Roy app in the App Store or Google Play. Use code locked space on when signing up and you're entered right there. And if you're already on Roy, make a payment and you'll also be automatically entered. No purchase necessary, void or prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for official rules. Download Roy, try it out, no subscription, no recurring fees. And for as little as $10 you can get in the NIL game, Roy, support the players, change the game. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day, every day. We are available daily and free by listening to the podcast and on YouTube. And like I said, um, the Florida Gators offense needs to do their part, right? Personally, I think that they need to be how – do, how do I word this? Because I don't think aggressive is necessarily the right word. I think they need to look for more explosive plays. And again, that, that's what I'm, I'm – I'm trying to word that – as fairly as I can, because I don't think it's just about being aggressive. First off, they went up tempo on Saturday. The Florida Gators did against UCF. It worked. Hopefully they continue doing it. But in the passing game, I think you need to look for deep shots or at least try to set them up. Okay. Uh, You look at what happened with the Arkansas game against Tennessee and Arkansas and quite a few explosive plays, just throwing the ball deep. And, and by explosive plays, I'm counting it strictly as uh, like like 20 plus yards downfield, in which case Arkansas went, uh, went four for six on those deep plays. Okay, Four for six on passes that traveled 20 yards in the air. That's really good. That's 100 yards that they picked up. I know that I know that four plus or four times 20 is 80. Um, but they picked up a hundred yards on the play because they weren't all exactly 20. Right. But that was huge. And by the way, the two incompletions were drops. They would have gone six for six on passes, 20 plus yards downfield, if not for drops. Okay. Like there's opportunities there for Florida. And I know Graham Mertz doesn't usually take the deep shots and doesn't usually even look for them. DJ DJ does, right? And like DJ can create explosive plays. I know that a lot of people hate the rotation and have their opinions of the rotation. I understand the coaching staff's logic behind the rotations. Um, I, I honestly don't care too much to dispute them or debate them or, or get into it with people about it. It's just because I don't think there's a point to it. Um, I would play DJ Moore, especially against a team like Tennessee. Like, and I would just tell Graham, Graham's a sixth-year senior. Like, he knows what it is, right? I would just tell Graham, be like, hey, you're going to get the start, but we're going back to the every other possession because we think that DJ's explosive playmaking ability and deep shot ability is just better for this matchup. And I don't think that anybody would be upset about that. Like, even if you went into it and said, hey, against Tennessee, we're going to have DJ in there so we could take more deep shots. Next week, it's right back to you. Like, I don't think anybody on the roster would feel some type of way about that. Because I think against Kentucky, you're not going to have as many deep shot opportunities. And so it makes sense after the Tennessee game to go, hey, we're going to have Graham take care of the football. And I know I said this against Miami, um, and Florida Gators coaching staff did not 
listen to me. Um, and this is one thing that I will stand on. I, I laid out what my blueprint would be to face Miami. Um, and Florida did none of that and got blown out. So maybe, just maybe, listen to me on this one. You listen to me on, on some of the run game stuff. I appreciate you. Keep Hayden in pass protection. And by the way, Hayden, I know Hayden got a, a holding call on Saturday against UCF. I know. We'll talk about that with him. Um, but keep Hayden in pass pro to help on James Pierce. I think James Pierce has been more quiet than than expected. I think a lot of that is opposing offenses preparing for him. But against Tennessee, Arkansas was not keeping guys in pass pro. Like Arkansas, let me see if I can pull up the numbers. Against Tennessee, Arkansas went out there in pass protection. They had running back to Quinton Jackson from Utah come out in pass pro one time. And they had running back Braylon Russell come out in pass pro one time. Outside, they didn't have a single tight end in pass pro. They didn't have any other running back in pass pro. They just went out there with, with their five offensive linemen. And they just went and and lined it up. I don't think that's a great strategy. I do think that when you look at uh, Taylor Green, his legs made plays, he extended plays, and he took some shots, and he ran the ball himself. I think you have that. Um, but I think that for Florida, you should keep Peyton Hansen into pass block on James Pierce. I will also say Tennessee's, uh, Tennessee's tackling has gotten progressively worse as the season's gone on especially in the secondary. You look at their safeties, quite a few missed tackles, especially against Arkansas. Trey Wilson, Aiden Mizell. I'm expecting both of them back this week. Run the sweeps, run screens, run the ball wide in general. I don't think I've really been the type. Like I know that a lot of Florida Gators fans complain about the sweeps and the screens and all that stuff. I don't think I've done that. Uh, if anything, my issue has been that you haven't done it enough with actually giving them the ball. You've just been running the fakes. I think you got to be better at that. Give your playmakers opportunities to create missed tackles. Run wide runs. Do it. Run gap run. Get them right up into the lane and go, hey, linebacker, you need to make a stop. Safety, you need to make a stop. Make them make stops. And you can do that. I think Florida can force Arkansas or can force Tennessee into doing that like Arkansas did. They got why. They made you pay. They, they made you work. A lot of the missed tackles from Tennessee was not from the running backs so much. A lot of it was from the receivers. A lot of it was when you get in space, they're not making these stops. That's the way to do it. Like, like that's the way that you have to create them. And so I think that when you look at what Florida can do against, our, uh, against Tennessee, that's how you do it. You, you get the ball two playmakers in space and make them work and make them earn it. And I think that Florida has to do that. You have to stay aggressive in that aspect, but you also have to stay aggressive in another way that we'll talk about next on Locked On Gators. Hey, NFL fans. I don't know if you know this. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats if you live play-by-play play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And uh, I need to I need to get something off my chest really quickly. Jerry Judy, I hate you. Uh, I had a parlay on Sunday that Jerry Judy screwed me on. It was four touchdowns, right? Four touchdowns. I had... Michael Pittman Jr. to score a touchdown. He did right away. DJ Moore to score a touchdown. He had two. Isaiah Lightby to score a touchdown. He had two. Jerry Judy to score a touchdown. He dropped one. I hate him now. Uh, that was my parlay. That would have been a very, very pretty penny. Unfortunately not, because Jerry Judy hates me too, so that's fine. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free of the podcast and on YouTube. And I harped on this a little bit yesterday. I harped on this a little bit on Saturday after the game against UCF. I'm going to harp on it today. 
probably talk about it. Maybe not tomorrow. Probably talk, maybe talk about it tomorrow. We might, we might ask Hayden about it tomorrow. Maybe talk about it on Thursday with Eric Kane, locked on balls. Maybe talk about it on Friday. Hell, if things don't change, we might talk about it on Saturday night after the game. Which, by the way, we will be going live on Locked On Gators after the game. And obviously, I, I don't even know how much this really needs to be said, but I'm saying it. You cannot let up in the second half here. Like the Florida Gators, I don't care if you're winning or trailing. You cannot become passive in the second half. That's not winning football at all. And if you weren't playing the ghost of Gus Malzahn, because that, again, I, I, I said before, like Florida dominated that game, I think because they just played average. Um, I think that's why Florida dominated against UCF. And they played average, and UCF played horrendous football. Um, I don't think that UCF, or I don't think Florida did anything special against UCF. I think that that was maybe the most pitiful showing I've seen from Gus Malzahn. And if he was more aggressive, like they were running clock in the second half while losing. I, I just didn't get it. Uh, and we went through the play. I'm like, we're not going to go through the play by play again. But basically, Florida was just like, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, check down, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball in the second half. And I understand you have the lead. You want to sit on the lead. And I, I fully support the, uh, I think it was, I think it was Shane Steichen, uh, former OC of the Eagles, current head coach of the Colts, who his thought process is we throw the ball to score points and we run the ball to win the game. And that's a great philosophy. But here's the thing. You don't have to exclusively run the ball and throw screens and little check downs. You don't have to exclusively just get completely conservative as an offensive play caller to win football games. You can score more points. Okay. Also, he says that in the NFL where leads are typically safer. I mean, look at college football in the past week, in the past few weeks. How many teams have blown leads late in games? Uh, how many comeback wins we've seen. It's happened a lot, okay? That's what happens when coaches let up. Hell, Cal did it against Miami. Like, Miami made adjustments and, and got significantly better in the second half of that game, but Cal also took their foot off the pedal. And I don't think you can do that at the Power 4 level and win football games. And I think a lot of coaches see that and learn their lessons, and I don't think Billy Napier has learned his lesson there. Right now, Florida, take away the Samford game. So take away the Samford game, and Florida is averaging 11 points in the second half. They scored, I think it was 7 against Miami, 20 against Texas A&M, 0 against UCF. I don't know what there's just If you heard the dog barking outside, I don't know what just happened. 0 against UCF. Um, and Mississippi State, I, th I think it was like 20-ish again. But Florida's averaging just 11 points in the second half if you take out the Sanford game. That's 85th in the country. 85th is not good, right? I think everybody can agree with that. Out of 134 teams, 85th isn't good. It could be worse, obviously, but... 85th sucks, and the Florida Gators are just in that spot right now. Uh, and, and that's just completely unacceptable football at this point in the game, at this point in the season, at this point in year three under Billy Napier. But that's what we're looking at. You're facing a Tennessee team. You let your foot off the gas last year against Tennessee, and you luckily still won because your defense played absolutely lights out. Like, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the defense last year. And I understand last year that there were some other circumstances that caused you to just go, hey, we just need to get out of this game right now. That can't happen this year when your job is on the line. That can't happen when you're facing a team with, about, I think Tennessee's defense this year is better than it was last year. I think they're better than UCF. Can't let that happen. You need to be more aggressive in the second half. You cannot let your foot off the gas. 
Thanks for the Lockdown Gators, your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free every listen to the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators football with Hayden Hansen. Also, everybody, stay safe with, with, with the storm and the hurricane. Please stay safe. Evacuate if you need to evacuate. Be smart. Be safe. Same. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore. Brandon, find all my written work with New York Giants on SI, and I'll see you all next time.